On this edition of Native Report, we travel to Lawrence, Kansas and visit the campus of Haskell Indian Nations University. We then meet several Haskell student athletes and learn how they balance their academic studies and sports. And we learn about the American Indian Athletic Hall of Fame, also on the campus of Haskell Indian Nations University. We also learn what we can do to lead healthier lives and hear from our elders on this edition of Native Report. Production of Native Report is made possible by grants from the Blandin Foundation, the Duluth Superior Area Community Foundation, and the Shakopee Midwakanton Sioux Community. Welcome to Native Report. I'm Rita Aspinwall. Thanks for tuning in. And I'm Ernie Stevens. Haskell Indian Nations University in Lawrence, Kansas opened its doors in 1884 to the first 22 students who studied agricultural education. Today the school averages 700 students per semester and offers four undergraduate degrees. Join us now as you learn about the history of Haskell Indian Nations University. About an hour west from the cities of Kansas City, Missouri and Kansas City, Kansas is the city of Lawrence, Kansas, home to Haskell Indian Nations University. When it first opened, it had 22 students in grades one through five and was known then as the United States Indian Industrial Training School. Roughly um, 1884 grades one through five, then expanded, you know, by the early 20th century into uh, um, elementary kind of grammar school, high school, K through 12 kind of thing, or grades one through 12. And then um, added vocational, technical training on top of that, became very uh, well known for its vocational trade program here. Um, evolved, the last high school gradu uh, graduating class here was in uh, 1965. And then, um, I think the discussion very started very uh, quickly in the late 60s to say, well, what we need really is a, a, a junior college, a two-year college. So Haskell made that move to start uh, serving our Native nations as a two-year associate and associate of science degree uh, granting institution. When I came in, in 1986, the discussion was just starting about are we ready to make that next step? Do we really need to look at offering baccalaureate degrees? Well, I always tell people that they are uh, stepping on the uh, uh, campus of the, the United Nations of Indigenous Higher Education. Over the last five years, our academic year, roughly from the middle of August to the middle of May, we have averaged students from 42 states of the United States every year, 42 of the 50, and over 140 federally recognized tribes and incorporated Alaska Native villages. So nine months out of the year, you can kind of think of, of Haskell as the largest intertribal learning community in North America, certainly, maybe the world. The past surrounds us, we live with it every day. And, and you see that here on the Haskell campus, you know, as students walk across the, the quad of any institution of higher learning, they're going to see reflected the story of those who came before. And when you look at the Haskell campus, you see kind of in microcosm uh, the architecture, for instance, this, this history of tribal federal relations, this history of different periods of um, what it was that maybe those in the government, those who make policy, thought was appropriate for Indian education, um, as well as how those Native students responded to that education, how they've made this place their own through all of those different periods. Students have always made the difference here. They have always been at the forefront of the change. We see, we see policy reflections 
perhaps in something like the architecture, but you don't have to scratch the surface very hard to see you know, the role that students play. You know, the past is, is always with us, and I think for American Indian people, you know, that, that, that clicks very naturally. The campus is steeped in history, and while acknowledging the past may be a strong selling point for prospective students, strong incentives to attend Haskell may be a faculty that can relate to the students, and tuition is very affordable at around $700 per calendar year. I want to do social work and then I want to get into the um, American Indian Studies program and learn about tribal management so I can go back to my tribe. The indigenous perspective that we have within our education system is crazy awesome because I go to school, you know, you go to public school and you learn everything that the, the Americans want you to learn, you know, but when you come here you learn everything that our tribes did, the, what they did within the Civil War, what they did within World War I and II, you know, it's, you just get a better indigenous perspective on things. We're really a family, like, the staff supports me 110%, the students support me, and I've met many people around Lawrence that come in to help pass school. And so just all around, I think I've found a new family, and it feels like it. And it's like the atmosphere around here. You know people are supporting you here. They want you to succeed. They don't want you to just be another person that goes through the system, and they're like, okay, we're just gonna get you to graduate. Like, they're like, no. We want you to graduate. We want you to find the job that you're in love with. We want you to go back to your community and help them. Like, I think that's the one thing that they, they strive for is to go back to our communities and make it better, not just leave it, you know, and go do something better. It's leave and then bring something better back. Even if they only stay for two years, you know, it's like you're gonna stay here and leave debt free. And so um, I think that's one of the pitching points that we always use because uh, they're not going to a mainstream university and having to take out loans and then deciding, oh, this isn't for me, now I'm stuck with these loans. Well, all you're doing is being stuck here for two years and you can get a two-year degree and transfer anywhere else. We do have the four-year degree programs and we talk about that with our students or potential students who want to come. I always say, you know, get into one of those programs and you get a four-year degree debt-free and transfer to go get a master's degree. There are many notable alumni, such as Jim Thorpe and Billy Mills, and even with such high-profile former students, Haskell Indian Nations University is probably Indian country's best-kept secret. It's amazing to me that you can still go all across the United States and find um, American Indians, Alaska Natives, who don't know about Haskell. That stated, you know, we do have a, a name recognition that's probably unparalleled. You know, you wear a Haskell hat and you can go anywhere in the United States and someone will come up and say, my grandmother went there, my grandpa went there, my grandma and grandpa met there. There's no school that's continuously operated for a hundred years that has gone, a federally funded school that has gone from those dark days of the Indian boarding schools and everything that that represented to an institution now that's very much about the present, about our future, always honoring the past, drawing on that strength we get from that past, but really thinking about the present work we need to do to make our, our communities and our nation strong and healthy. We give students some incredible opportunities. What I like to say to our tribal peoples is, this is your university. Obstructive sleep apnea is relatively common and is a serious health problem. It causes breathing to stop and start again and again during sleep. There are several kinds of sleep apnea, but the most common is obstructive sleep apnea. This is usually caused by the throat muscles and tongue relaxing during sleep. This causes the airway to close and block any airflow coming in. Snoring is generally a part of sleep apnea. Signs and symptoms of sleep apnea are headaches, difficult to control blood pressure, daytime sleepiness, difficulty concentrating, mood changes and depression, memory problems, loud snoring, and awakening with a sore throat or a dry mouth. Sometimes people know if they snore loudly or stop breathing, 
but most often this is reported by a partner. Not everyone who snores has obstructive sleep apnea, but this is a common sign. Snoring in obstructive sleep apnea is usually loudest when sleeping on your back and quiets when sleeping on your side. When the airway closes, the lungs don't get oxygen and carbon dioxide builds up in the blood. Eventually, your brain senses this and wakes you up enough to open your airway, but usually not enough that you remember it. This wakening usually has a snorting and gasping sound, and this very often wakes partners up, but not the person with the apnea. The stop and start cycles can happen often, and I once sent someone for a sleep study, and he woke up 131 times in eight hours. He didn't remember a single time, and he thought he slept all night. Risk factors for sleep apnea are high blood pressure, chronic nasal congestion, asthma, a family history of sleep apnea, diabetes, and a narrowed airway. Men are twice as likely as women to have sleep apnea, and excess weight is a big risk factor for sleep apnea. Non-traditional tobacco use, cigarette smoking is absolutely a risk factor. Sleep deprivation is a serious health problem and increases the risk of heart disease, heart attacks, and strokes. Partners of someone with sleep apnea can suffer from sleep deprivation also. A sleep study is generally the test for diagnosis, and during this study there are multiple monitors for your heart, lung and brain activity, arm and leg movements, oxygen levels, and breathing patterns. Sometimes the staff monitoring the study will wake you up halfway through and give you continuous positive airway pressure through the rest of the night. The treatments for sleep apnea include weight loss, exercise, cutting back on alcohol, smoking cessation, avoiding sleeping on your back, and other measures. For more severe cases, using a CPAP machine is the best treatment. CPAP stands for Continuous Positive Airway Pressure, and a machine delivers air to a mask that is sealed over your mouth and nose to keep your airway open. It isn't uncommon to think the machine is too loud or to have difficulty tolerating the mask. Most people, once they give it a fair chance, find they start feeling much better. There are different masks if someone doesn't tolerate CPAP, and there are appliances that help keep the jaw forward, but CPAP is the standard treatment for sleep apnea. Talk to your provider if you have further questions. Sleep apnea is treatable, and treating it can greatly improve your quality of life. Remember to call an elder. They've been waiting for your call. I'm Dr. Arnie Vinio, and this is Health Matters. Since the fall of 1999, Haskell Indian Nations University currently serves as the only four-year intercollegiate athletic program in the nation where all scholar-athletes represent diverse Native American and Alaska Native nations. But school administration and staff emphasize how both sports and academics prepare these students for life after athletics. I really like the positivity that these girls bring to me and it's just a lot of fun. I wanted to come to all native school. I went to a public school so it was like I was one of six maybe. It's Tuesday evening and the Haskell Indian women's basketball team is playing against Kansas Wesleyan University. For some of these players it will be their first season with the team and for others it will be their final one before graduating. What they all have in common is their desire to play for Haskell. This being my first time experience, I, it's been a really big change for me. And I learned that it's nothing compared to high school at all. Whether it's NAIA, D1, 2, 3, I feel like they all reach at a high level. And it's like the effort you put into it is going to be the outcome. Haskell is a really hard, hardworking program in all of its sports and I believe that they're very well connected. They all support each other at each other's games and just anywhere in general. I feel like we're all there to support. The girls are very helpful, very um, patient with me, doing um, a lot of different things on the other side and I'm coming in kind of late because I do other um, sports as well. Of course, it's um, being a collegiate, um, it's a lot harder but I feel like the bond that these girls bring just help it and make it a lot easier, especially the coaching. He's very positive as well. Out of high school, I didn't have any offers, and one of my teammates here, actually her mother, um, helped Coach Flanagan find me. 
At first it was uh, kind of weird because of like, how natives play and how um, like, the public school I went to played is very different. Here it's a lot faster and just a lot of passing and shooting. And then when I was in high school, it wasn't like anywhere close to this. It was still fast, but not um, just like style and shooting. If you are in the position I was, being native and not um, been around your culture, this is the perfect school to go to because you're just surrounded by it. Even if they're not from your tribe, it's still interesting to learn like um, like suffrage that they went through and just it's it's amazing and just being it's like homey even if you're not home. Being a former Division One athlete um, from the University of New Mexico, I'd always heard of Haskell. Um, I had friends who had come to Haskell and um, just thought what a great place to be a part of a, um, an institution that's all Native American. They have to face a lot of risk, they have to face some um, challenges, they have to problem solve quickly, and they have to communicate, they have to let go of um, you know, situations emotionally, um, which is what we do in life every day. And as they want to lead their Native nations, those are seeming the same, the same skill sets that they're gonna have to learn and fight through. These student athletes have the will and desire to be the best at the sport they play, but they also desire to keep up academically in their studies. And they know if they work hard, they can have time for both sports and school. Since we have to travel a lot, I miss a lot of class, so I have to be able to communicate with my teachers and my coach to make sure I get everything done on time and that I'm keeping that 3.5 or higher. <laughs> Being at Haskell is really amazing because the school is affordable and um, if this school doesn't offer the class that you'd like to take or the major, you can get your prereqs here and then go to KU for free. So I've taken a couple KU classes and it's really different at KU compared to Haskell. It's a gem of an institution. Um, it's you know located in a great community called Lawrence, Kansas. Uh, it's a true college community, college town. You have the Haskell community, you have the KU community, and then you have the Lawrence community. We also are an institution that's really looking about their future, meaning are you interested in graduate studies? Are you interested in um, professional schools and looking at internship programs? We're able to kind of really help steer them into different directions and paths that they might not have thought was available before. With sports and academically, it's a lot of work. You're spending most of your time in the gym, of course, and I feel like having your teammates is another way of um, being able to um, keep your mind on top of your academics, and they help out a lot, especially when they already taken those classes. They can help you. They're like your family's second tutors, and in general, they just provide you different techniques and help helping in an academic way. I look up at the banners every single day and I see myself wanting to be on there and I think it pushes everyone, all the athletes, to want to be on there. And seeing like each person's name on there, I think it stands for something that where you can become one of those people or become whatever you want to be if you work hard enough. Well, of course, what we all share is our culture, our tribes, and I feel like that being a common thing on campus and high school as well is just um, just an instant bond, I have to say. Um, just knowing, you don't have to know the person. I feel like we're all connected in our ancestral ways. I didn't do really well in school. When I started off in college, I wasn't a motivated student. I wasn't. I was a motivated rock climber. I spent most of my time rock climbing and a little of my time studying. If you don't study, you, know, you don't pass your test. And so I had a 1.72 grade point, got kicked out of school as a freshman. Um, took my job in the mountains as a rock climber. I uh, worked on a survey crew. And, and so I, people in my life came along when I didn't necessarily expect it and encouraged me to do something I wasn't necessarily thinking about. Uh, the guy I worked for in the survey crew convinced me to go back to school and become an engineer. Uh, when I was a senior in college, I tutored a guy in calculus who happened to be f uh, fly fighters in World War II. Uh, that uh, encouraged me to join the Navy. So, you know, certain folks came along and, and made me think about something I hadn't thought about. So what advice would you have for a young person uh, 
while that's out there, a young native person. Sure. Well, for, uh, for any kids, native or otherwise, you know, um, my research is in, in education, my PhD is in education, and the idea is working with students, working with your hands, and being able to work as a group and hands-on learning. Uh, find something you love to do, and if it takes you down the path to be an astronaut or whatever your, your goal in life is, make sure you talk to the people that are doing it. You know, talk to the folks that are in the role that you would like as a career. Uh, don't go off with this fantasy of what it is, talk to them and see if it's actually something you would like to do. And then work hard at it. And work hard at it or work well with others. That's, you'll take you down a path that you may not expect. Within the Tony Coffin Sports Complex on the campus of Haskell Indian Nations University is the little known American Indian Athletic Hall of Fame whose purpose is to recognize the great athletes of Native American heritage. It is also designed to serve as a model for Native youth to strive for their own physical greatness. Join us now as you learn about the Hall of Fame. Founded in 1972, the American Indian Athletic Hall of Fame has called the Haskell Indian Nations University Athletic Complex home for several decades. Thousands of students, adults, and non-natives have visited the hall over these many years. The whole purpose of it is to let the youth, particularly the youth, uh, have something that they could aspire to do through athletics. And, you know, we have a little older population here. They're college-age kids, uh, 18 to whatever, 40, 50. And uh, so it's a little bit different here. But at the same time, you know, we have student athletes here, they can look at that and it can be an inspiration for them as well. 54 native nations from 30 states across Indian country are represented in the Hall of Fame. And to date, 20 different sport categories have been recognized. Among the more notable Hall of Famers is Jim Thorpe, Billy Mills, and Sonny Sixkiller who played quarterback for the University of Washington. There are also many who may not be as well known. There was an individual here, they won the um, Littlefinger, was his name, Wallace Littlefinger, I think, and he was from South Dakota. And they won the Texas Relays, the Kansas Relays, and the Drake Relays. And there was one story of him running the first leg and the last leg, and he, they still won. <laughs> I never heard of such a I mean, you know, that, that really inspired me. The very first team that they inducted in was the 1926 football team, and that's when Haskell had the undefeated team. And so they inducted, I think, 11 or 13 of those, you know, members at one time. And they were the same team that uh, the stadium was uh, constructed in the first game, 1926. I have this. I coached this kid. Oh my. He won the Empire State Building run. Wow. I, I forget how many steps it is up there. And yep. Like he's got the record for it. Five times in a row he won it. Yeah. He won the uh, Pikes Peak run. He's, this was his kind of his mentor. He was a older. They're from Hamas Pueblo. There's another one. He, uh, he was uh, the only other American besides Billy. He finished highest ever. And then wow. Billy, he was second in Olympics in uh, 10,000 wow. meters. Little Hopi, Hopi kid. Jerry is also an inductee into the Hall of Fame, but his plaque sits in the university display case. Even though the Hall of Fame is on the Haskell campus, it is not affiliated with the university, and there is the possibility the Hall of Fame will be moved to another site. They've talked about doing this for some time, actually, but there's a possibility that it's going to transition to, to Oklahoma City. You know, you come here and a lot of people think, oh, that's a Haskell Hall of Fame. And it's really not. It's American Indian Athletic Hall of Fame. It's not just Haskell. Now, there are over 20 some in here who are Haskell, you know, affiliations at some point. I think that finances have kept it from really getting out to the general public. Uh, I know even here at Haskell, I think most of the students, they kind of just walk by it and they don't really pay any attention to it. You know, I've got one of my plaques here, and uh, why is he over there, you know? But it's really part of the, the, but we didn't have space, see? We couldn't afford to get more, you know, areas here, so it's secure. 
we do have an American Indian Athletic Hall of Fame to highlight those student athletes or those professional athletes, whatever level they are, so that we can inspire the youth, give them a, you know, a motivation to, for them to be maybe one day in the Hall of Fame. It's an exposure, a positive exposure for our Native people. And uh, I think it will continue to grow as we get more of the tribes involved. I'm going to be sad to see it leave. For more information about Native Report, all the stories we've covered, look for us on the web at nativereport.org, on Facebook, and on YouTube. Thank you for spending this time with your friends and neighbors across Indian Country. I'm Rita Aspinwall. And I'm Ernie Stevens. Join us next time for Native Report. Rita Aspinwall is an enrolled member of the Fond du Lac Band of Lake Superior Chippewa and is an ICWA social worker with Fond du Lac Social Services. Ernie Stevens is a member of the Oneida Nation of Wisconsin and is a film and television producer. Production of Native Report is made possible by grants from the Blandin Foundation, the Duluth Superior Area Community Foundation, and the Shakopee Midwakanton Sioux Community.